and today I'm joined with Mel Hello. and Phoebe and Turbo. And today we're going to be talking to you about snakes and snake safety uh, in the summer months with your dogs and the importance of being ready and being aware both in your home um, and when you're walking your dogs as well as some really helpful tips as to what you can do if your do dog does get a snake bite um, and the signs and symptoms to look out for um, as well as what to do when you call your vet. So what can you do around your house and your backyard to prevent snakes? Do you have any good tips? I have a lot of tips, Mel. <laughs> So guys, um, the tips, the top tips that we have come together to make sure little guys just like this stay nice and safe is make sure that your backyard is super clean. Snakes get into every nook and cranny they could possibly find, especially in the heat. Um, and so can these guys, especially when they're a nice little size like this, they can also access the small um, gaps and things like that between your old furniture if you've got that laying around outside. So we say clean up all of your scraps. If you have old pots or, or tree cuttings, um, old planters that you're not using, uh, or just a general um, scrapyard, um, I know sometimes <laughs> I do if we're waiting for verge collection, make sure you clean that up. Um, that includes um, green waste as well. Okay. Um, so I know in my suburb at the moment has a green waste collection coming up. So we have lots of big palm leaves around which snakes can um, definitely crawl into and hide under for a bit of shade during the summer. Um, the next thing, Mel, we suggest is trim the grass. Make sure your grass is nice and trimmed, um, and that way you can see, as well as your dogs can see, if there's something lying around on the back lawn. Oh, and I guess, I guess that kind of grass would attract snakes. It's easy for them to hide and be warm. In. Most definitely. And if you live near bushlands or parks as well that don't get their grass trimmed regularly and your snake finds its way into the backyard, mm. um, that can be a nice point of comfort for them. Um, so they also will be less inclined to leave your backyard and head back out to the long grass. Um, yeah, there's a couple of more things. Yeah, so um, I want to talk about the snake repeller we have in front of us. I don't know yes. if you can see that. Um, how does that work? Is that something that works by itself or do you need to layer it with other techniques? Um, so we suggest using, on our website, we actually have some great information about how many snake repellers you'll need for your backyard, um, as well as what to watch out for, whether you've got a concrete slab or different sheds. Um, the devices run on their own accord and you charge them up and get ready. They've also got the great solar um, on the top there, so it's kind of like a bit of a set and leave. Okay. Um, we suggest using these devices with other helpful tips and tricks that we've said um, before, um, and then that way you're setting yourself up for the um, most success. Um, as we said, clean everything up, um, remove all any rotten fruit if you've got rotten fruit trees, um, as that can really help the snake repellers to be, I suppose, the best they can be. Well, I think the rotten fruit and vegetables would actually attract rodents and things that snakes exactly. Want to eat. So exactly. we want to, I guess, prevent snakes from coming full stop and anything that seems particularly attractive, right? Yep. Uh, another cool way to do that is to plant some native plants, which attract snake killing birds. Um, so if you hop onto or in your local council website, actually, they should have some of those. Um, and that helps deter the snakes from coming to your house. If they've got um, predatory birds around, they just know that your house probably isn't the safest environment for them. Um, and they tend to just slither on away and not worry you. And then I guess you'd also need to keep your house sealed as well. So Correct. When coming inside, you don't want them going into your shoes that you leave outside. Yep, most definitely. Okay. Bring your shoes inside. Don't leave any deep kids' toys out there or um, the nice little shell baths that our dogs can use sometimes. Um, seal all your doors and entrances. That includes your shed if you have a garden shed, um, as well as your dog door. Um, we've heard um, quite a few stories of snakes getting through dog doors. So make sure you lock that up at night time or if you're not in the home okay. um, or just keep a close eye out on that because um, they can certainly get their way in. And then I guess you also need, just need to be aware of where you live. Yes, that's a big one. Be aware of where you live. If you live in parkland, bushland, by the beach as well, um, snakes can be more prominent in those areas and also what state you're in. Um, as you know, Queensland and Western Australia have very different um, snakes and I suppose in those more tropical areas, you can find those in your roof. So you need to be aware of what state you're in um, as to what possibility, um, what, sorry, as to where the snakes can get into your home and what kinds of snakes you have. Okay. That includes if you've got ones that are larger, smaller, venomous or not so venomous. Um, we do suggest just really being aware of the surroundings. Hello. So on that note, I guess we should talk more about these guys and walking your dog and the tips to avoid snakes when you're with your dog out and about. So yeah. what do you have that you can suggest? Okay, so as I was saying to Mel earlier today, we went for a walk the other night at night time 
And I thought, oh my goodness, this is the worst possible time for snakes. We went off the designated tracks, which was even more dangerous. So we're going to say to you, don't do those things and do what we're about to tell you. So I think, Mel, <laughs> make sure you stay on the designated track. Don't go for a bushwalk in snake season. You never know what you might find or what your dog might find. Make sure if these guys start sniffing for a long extended period of time in the same place, uh, keep an eye out on what they're sniffing. You would hate for it to be the back of a snake or a side of a snake and then it would end very well for either of them. Um, watch your ankles too if you're walking. Um, sometimes we forget to, to do those things. So make sure you have long socks, long boots or long pants okay. as snakes can definitely nip you as well as your dogs in that moment. Um, so what do you need to do with your dog walking? Do, they, do you need to be conscious of what they're doing? You sure do. That's a big thing that we forget. So never let your dog off the lead, even if you're confident in areas and you go to those areas every day. We have no idea where the snakes are that particular day. Hello, gorgeous. <laughs> so don't let your dog off the lead. Um, be super okay. aware because in what might be a safe area one day isn't a safe area the next day. And that includes beaches as well. Sometimes we um, really? neglect the fact that snakes are commonly by the ocean um, and in the sand dunes, especially here in Western Australia. Um, so I know as exciting as it is to let your dog off the lead when you get straight to the beach and oh, these two yeah. look like they would love doing that, um, please keep them on the leads because you just never know when a snake is going to kind of uh, slither its way out into your pathway and their pathway. And I guess one thing that I do without realising is we watch what our dogs scent, like smell for on a walk. We want to make sure that they're not finding a track that leads to a snake, hopefully leads to a snack. Exactly. <laughs> it probably leads to a snack when a snake. So, yeah, keeping an eye on, I guess, what they focus on. Exactly. That's a really good point. Just make sure that you're aware of what your dog is doing during your walk. If you walk with your earphones on or if you walk with your phone in your hand looking at your phone, that's not really um, safe for your dog during snake season. Okay. So we really do need to be aware. Um, and another thing on that word awareness is know your local vet and know that's your local after-hours vet. Um, even aside from snake season, that's a really good thing to know. Um, I know a lot of um, local vets in my area have got fridge magnets, so I've popped them all over my fridge, so I've that's got the number idea. really quickly, so I'm not panicking to try and Google something on my phone and get stuck with a million ads in the way. So know your vet, Mel. That is a very good tip. You very too, guys. Tip. You too. So I guess on that note, I don't want to assume the worst here, but what happens if something happens to your dog? Do you... Is it the same as a human? Because I know when a human gets bitten mm -hmm. by a snake, you immobilise the area mm -hmm. and you don't let them move too much. Most definitely. Is it the same? It's the same. Okay. So we say keep your dog nice and still and try to immobilise them. If you have a dog this size, carry them home as calmly and gently as you possibly can. Don't keep walking, hoping and yeah. seeing um, that it will get better. So it spread the venom. Exactly. So okay. keep them as still as you can. If you have a large dog, if you are close to home and your friend or partner who, or whoever you live with is at home, give them a call and they can bring the car to come and get you both. Um, as you've said, movement isn't good for them. It can help to spread the venom. Okay. So just try and keep them as um, still as possible, just okay. like what you said about humans as well. And then on that note again, would you just call the vet? I would say call the vet. Okay. Call your vet <laughs> if, it's, um, if you're after hours. This is when we say have that magnet on your fridge or a number in your phone or simply know the area to call your vet to let them know that either you're coming or ask them for advice. Okay. That way the emergency room in some sense can prepare for you. Um, or if you can give them, oh thank you, <laughs> enough information, they might be able to give you some advice um, to watch and wait. Okay. Um, but that's super important to consult a health professional when it comes to venomous bites such okay. as snakes. And then is it a good idea to hunt down the snake so you can figure out what it is? Well, from research that I've done, um, we don't think so because the time that you spend searching for the snake and stressing your dog out whilst your dog is not sure what you're doing simply isn't worth it. If you know the snakes within your areas, like we've mentioned before, then at least you can say to your vet it could be X, Y, Z. Um, so we say unless it's simple to do, unless it's in your um, line of sight already, just get your, get your dog home and call the vet. Okay, so what other tips do you have, I guess, if anything happens to your dog? So, the other tips we would say is be aware of what the symptoms are of snake bite. Okay. So, um, that includes weakness and collapse, and that will be quite obvious within your dog. Their personality and their energy levels will change really quickly. Um, vomiting, that is a very um, sudden sign of snake bite. Dilated pupils, um, amongst okay. that can also be caused by stress, but dilated pupils is a big one if your dog has been bitten by a snake. 
Um, paralysis, that's something that can occur um, both with paralysis ticks and snake bites. So just make sure, uh, again, you're aware of your area and that it's not a tick that's gotten your dog um, as they are quite um, full on in the summer seasons as well. And later on, um, if you are unaware that your dog has been bitten, um, blood and urine can be a really okay. good sign that your dog has been bitten by a snake. Um, so if you do have any anxiety that that may have happened, we always say call your vet because they will be able to give you advice. Um, but certainly look out for those signs okay. and act accordingly. Okay, so it's pretty relatively easy to tell because something will be clearly wrong. Most definitely, most okay. definitely. And they do say that 80% of pets that have been attended too quickly by vets do survive snake bites. So it's definitely in their best interest and your best interest, uh, interest sorry, to act fast. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much for those tips. That was awesome and really interesting to hear how you can really layer that prevention. Most protection. definitely. And it's protecting them, it's protecting you and your families. Just practice safe walking with your dog, as I said, Mel. Walk mm -hmm. nice and loud, um, nice and strong and clear so snakes can run away. And just make sure you're keeping an eye out for these guys in the um, snake seasons. And the snake propellers, as we mentioned before, are a really great way to um, utilise snake protection in your backyard amongst the other simple at-home DIY um, sort of prevention methods okay. that you can do. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for watching, guys. We really appreciate it. Thank you. We'll see you next week for some more exciting content. As per usual, you're welcome to send an email through um, and Mel and I can definitely have a chat about something you'd like next week as well. Thank you. Thank bye. you. Say bye. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> oh, thank you.